Well, good morning. Welcome to Sunrise with Pastor Hayton. So good to be coming your way again to share just a few minutes with you on this Saturday morning. I'm going to get right down to the thought that's come to my mind for this morning, and that is the verse of Scripture that we find in the beloved book of Psalms, from no doubt the Psalmist David, who said, I was young and now I am old, yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. And you know, I've read the Bible practically ever since I learned how to read, I suppose, and been in church so many times across the years of my life, and yet, you know, sometimes it takes a special occasion to make the Bible really real to us, and perhaps I had read this verse or heard it read, but there's a particular incident that happened while we were pastoring a little country church back in the early days of our ministry, a little church up in North Missouri, a little community called Bynumville. Some of you that are probably watching me know exactly where Bynumville is, and probably some of you are still in Bynumville. But we enjoyed the couple of years that we pastored at Bynumville there. But, uh, you know, we went up there, and, and uh, we had two children when we moved into the little parsonage there at the church. And just a couple months later, my wife gave birth to our third child, and Shortly thereafter, we took in a couple of foster children, children of a family member that needed a home, and so we went from two to five children in just a matter of weeks. Now, that was quite an increase in family, and it was also a burden on the family budget. We didn't have a lot of money up there in that little community, and uh, if we did have, I, not much of it was being channeled to the preacher anyway, so we had a tight budget and things were tough. And the second year I was there, I was asked if I would drive a school bus for the Catholic school uh, up the road a little ways. They were closing the school at Wien and going to bus all their students to Salisbury to the school there. And uh, they hired the holiness preacher to drive the school bus. And I was really dependent upon that school bus driving job. It paid $6 a day. Doesn't sound like a lot of money, but actually it was a good increase in my income to have that $6 a day, that $30 a week coming in. It was a pretty good increase, really. And, uh, you know, shortly thereafter, though, we had an incident that happened that really had me worried for a little while. I had an old 63 Oldsmobile 98, beautiful car, and uh, I'd given $650 for it, and Thought I would drive it for a long, long time, but not too long after I bought it and started driving it, started consuming a lot of oil. I could hardly keep oil in that thing. My father-in-law, O.E. Price, came up and preached a revival and diagnosed the problem during that revival. Said, Charlie, there's an oil ring stuck in one of the pistons there, and I'll help you fix that before I go home. So that Monday morning, following the uh, end of the revival on a Sunday night, we uh, pulled the car into the uh, added-on garage of the parsonage and jacked it up and began to work on there, crawled under and took the oil pan off. And my father-in-law didn't do any work. He just told me what to do. And I followed his instructions very carefully and took the piston out. And we put new rings in it and got it back together. And he got behind the wheel to start it, and it didn't want to start. Well, it acted like it wasn't getting any gas, and... Typically, I didn't have much gas in my tank at any one time, so could be that with it jacked up in the front and a little bit of a slope that there wasn't enough gas in the car to really get it started. So I got a quart oil can and filled it with gas to prime the carburetor. And while he was cranking the engine, I was going to prime that carburetor pouring out of this quart oil can of gasoline. And about the time I started priming, well, the car backfired and the gasoline ignited. And it was just like a big firecracker going off in my hand. And long story short, I was severely burned from that incident. I uh, suffered first, second, third degree burns on my arm and hand and other parts of my body. And, and uh, boy, I mean, it was a pretty bleak looking time. The doctor had diagnosed that there probably was going to have to be skin grafting and looked like I was going to be off work for a long, long time. Well, you know, 
the people in the community, they had heard about the faith of the holiness preacher and they began to bring in food. I mean, they cleaned out their freezers and brought us sacks of, of, of beef and pork and they went into their pantries and got us jars and cans of all kinds of canned goods and we were really eating better after my burn than before my burn. But I knew that that wouldn't last and we went to the Lord in prayer and I don't know whether it was my prayers or the prayer of somebody else, but somebody touched heaven for me and those burns were healed and within two weeks I was back driving my school bus and getting the income that I needed and I just look back on that time and know that a miracle had happened and I indeed know that, you know, God never forsakes his people. I have, I, I have never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. And down across the years, I've learned to trust in the Lord because of that incident, knowing that God will be faithful to meet our need. God will be faithful to take care of us. And so I'm thankful for the times that I can look back upon that has given me faith to believe that God will be there for us, that he'll take care of us, and uh, whatever our need is, God's able to meet that need. Well, let's have prayer before we come to a close today. Heavenly Father, we're glad that we can look down and cross the years of our life and be aware that we serve a God that has proven himself to be faithful. And Lord, indeed, thou dost not, never forsake your children. You're always there for them. You met our need at a critical time. You brought divine healing. We thank thee, O oh Lord, for your faithfulness to us. And we know that should there be anyone listening today that is facing some kind of a crisis in their life, may they be encouraged just to look to God. And remember what David said, I was young, now I am old, yet I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Bless our lives throughout this day. Lord, bring us close to you and help us to live a life that is pleasing and acceptable to God, a life that is a blessing to others. We pray in Christ's name, amen. We well, thank you and be encouraged to trust the Lord and we'll see you on Monday morning, good Lord willing. Goodbye.